Hello ladies and gentlemen, it is Triple G and welcome to the Grizzly Gauntlet. Do you ever have those games from way back in your past that just seemed to be really good at the time of their release, yet somehow just fizzled out and were forgotten with time? I mean this is a trend that seems to go on my channel quite a lot, but honestly, this game I'm talking about today seems to be one that's well regarded in the gaming community, was supposed to be a trilogy, and yet still didn't go anywhere. A game by the name of Metal Arms, Glitch in the System. This game was originally made by seven people at Swingin' Ape Studios, and for some reason, they never got around to making the next two games. Now, it's probably like a lot of games that I review on my channel. There was some kind of marketing problem, or people didn't pick up the game in droves, or simply the investors weren't interested in making another game in the franchise, but this definitely seems like a well-regarded game, and I really need to do it justice, so let's crack on. seen anyone like him. Let's get him back to Droid Town. The Colonel will know what to do. Check out that strange marking. This is never mentioned again. Hey, Crunk. Were you able to repair our mystery bot? Of course I f***ing fixed him. It was a huge pain in the f***ing waistband because he's some kind of custom jobby. But nothing I couldn't handle. Take our new fixer-upper to data upload and get him back online. Now, ladies! Yes, sir! of the universe, thought to have been built from debris and spacecraft by a mysterious race called the Morbots. The Mormons? While they've never been seen, it is believed that the Morbots still inhabit great cities at the core of Iron Star, where they generate the massive amounts of power consumed by the planet's inhabitants. None dare enter the Morbots' lethal domain, and the mere mention of their name evokes fears of mutation, mutilation, or worse, deactivation. This is never mentioned again. Over time, the surface of Iron Star saw the droid race grow and prosper by mining vast amounts of the planet's plentiful ore. The ore allowed the droids to establish an advanced industrial society which thrived for thousands of years until the droid's beloved Dr. Exavolt attempted to advance droid technology beyond its current limits, but his experiment went terribly wrong. So essentially, a robot guy created robots, but then he made bad robots who were fighting the good robots. Nice. I have a question though, who made the robot scientist who in turn is making more robots? Was it humans? More robots? Aliens? Is this some kind of jab at the implications of man's meddling with AI and robotics? Is it a cautionary tale on the hubris of creating sentience? Is it- Oh look, there's, there's a dog one. That's a dog one. Woof. So yeah, the story kicks off with us waking up with amnesia and being one of the few resistance fighters available to stop the bad robots known as Mills from advancing to our home base, Droid Town. The Mills are led by a nasty sounding robot called General Corrosive who was created by Dr. Exabolt during his experimental stages of robot building. Okay, so first thing, the controls are pretty nice. You walk around in a third person perspective with your trigger buttons doing the shooting, shoulders doing the bashing, X and B for weapon selection, A to jump, Y to interact with the environment, and some kind of squad command on the D-pan which, as with all squad based video games, you will never use. Ever. Our hero glitch moves around pretty well. When he jumps you can feel how heavy he is and the animation's really fluid. Alright, follow us! You can double tap your A button to gain the extra hype you'll need to get up to that door. Wait, what? I, c I can... I can double jump? <laughs> this is amazing. Aha! Our first opponents in battle. To arms! Apparently when they die, sometimes they drop these washers, which you can use to buy weapons and upgrades later on in the game. Okay, can I just point out that this, in the context of the game, is really gross? Like, I'm taking bits of their body parts to sell for equipment. That's like if you're just playing Call of Duty and all of a sudden you're all like, Well, we won't be needing that bone marrow anymore, will we? <laughs> <laughs> mm. Ow, fuck it up. 
You can also find secret items and fellow droids trapped behind destructible areas and it's well worth checking the environment just to find them. Grenade! Turn back, glitch! Oh, screwed! No! I can't believe it. They're just gone. Oh well. Do, 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 do. Another neat thing you get to do in this game is control other robots using some kind of arcade cabinet. But again, in the context of the whole robots controlling the minds of other robots... Bit weird. In the next level, we're even introduced to a vehicle section, which is awesome. Uh, I guess these guys are the upgrade shop guys? Uh, how much is anything? Seriously, where's the cost of anything in this shop? I want to know the value of the thing! Seriously, where is the cost of the thing? I want to buy the thing. I want to know the value of the thing. I want- I love the music though. Clearly the hip hop tune of the century. So yeah, we destroy the mines and move on to the next stage, defend Droytown. And after fending off what seems like a hundred thousand mils, we then get to fight this rather intimidating boss fight. Well that was piss easy. Nice work, kid. You did good. What did you expect? I was just warming up. Well, let's not break out the joy lube just yet. Hang on, is that a toaster tog? Aha, a linear vehicle section. It's kind of pants. The vehicle's pretty cool, but it handles a bit like the Warthog in the Halo series if you filled its chassis with balloons, aka floaty and sometimes the hit detection is ridiculous. Wait, 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 I take it back. The dog is operating the gun turret. The dog is operating the gun turret. You're absolutely bonkers, mate, but I can't stay mad at you. I can't stay. You should go. Okay, now there's um, zombie robots. Zombie robots. Zombie. What's the matter? Ah, oh, defective. My joints need regrinding. My crankshaft is bad. I can't even get my piston up. Uh, yeah. H hang on, it's Warburton. It's Patrick Warburton from the Emperor's New Groove. Mm. So now we actually get to play as Patrick's character, Moser. And this game routinely lets you play as some of the world's more colourful characters in their own little solo mission to enable Glitch to continue the story. It's really cool. Patrick, no! Oh fuck. That's a big rubbit. Our buddy Moses is on a conveyor belt headed to certain doom, so the battle has a time limit. And to kill the boss, you need to shoot it until it exposes its mouth, and then shoot it in exactly the right spot with the slingshot grenades. Monstrosity. Though honestly, it's been a while since I've played a fun little shooter like this. There are loads of great weapons, upgrades, enemy types, objectives and scenarios that keep this game fresh. And due to the double jump ability and glitches resistance to fall damage, you can do some pretty cool stuff. So yeah, we do some other stuff like destroy a few comm tower relays and do a pretty fun turret section. It's not hard or anything, but it nicely changes the pace of the game for about 5 minutes. Hey, nice job, Turdbot. It's about time you cleared those guys out. I've been hiding up here for a f***ing month, living off oil puddles and tin scraps. I thought you were captured. I escaped, dumbass. These shills couldn't hold a conversation. Ah, the foul-mouthed engineer robot from earlier gets his own level too. Also, just as a fun fact, I'd like to point out that this guy is voiced by Dan Castellaneta, aka Homer Simpson. Homer.
Don't shake your fist at me! Look, man, I don't want any trouble. Come on. Hey, here, just take my wallet. Leave me alone, okay? <laughs> Crap. I can't. It's too high. It's too high. My head fell off. It's always something with you f***ing bots. Homer. What the matter, buddy? The American flag not good enough for you? That was my father. I'm your father now. Crunk. Ha <laughs> ha! Take that, you f***ing shitbags! There's actually a lot of genuinely funny bits in this game, too. It really nicely breaks up the pace of the action. Will the party or parties responsible for releasing all of the experimental loony bots please return them to their pens? They are shooting the employees. Thank you. Oh, shit. There are a lot of cool little details in this game, too. As you take damage, Glitch's armor gets more worn out, he's got an aerial on the back of his backpack that moves depending on how you sprint, and each weapon gets a sweet new look and ability each time you upgrade it. Oh no, the target we were chasing got away. Oh wait, who's that? The dog is driving, ladies and gentlemen, the dog is driving. Why? So next we're tasked with rescuing Dr. Exobolt from the mills, and we go underground to some sort of mysterious city. This level in particular shows just how pretty the game's environments can be when it gets away from the scrapyards and wasteland segments. Oh look, a new friend! His name is Slosh. Hey there! Slosh! My name is Slosh! Hey, hey! Can you help me get out of here? Huh? 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 Uh, sure! We also get some really inventive gameplay moments. For instance, a little into the game we have to pretend to be following the orders of the mills and do a command-based game of Simon Says. Command flip! Command rotate left! Command rotate right! Or even a part where we need to disassemble Glitch with a wrench so he can transport his body parts to another area of the map and reassemble himself. Okay, then we rescue Dr. Exabolt and he straight up betrays us and gets the mills to attack Droid City. Wanker! And then we face off against our antagonist, General Corrosive. Well, sort of. Glitch gets captured and taken to an arena where we face opponents for three levels, of which we're only allowed to use one weapon in each one. Then on the fourth level, we have to fight General Corrosive with our fists. Our fists! How about no? So obviously we can't win this fight, so we need to grab a wrench from a nearby box, disassemble ourselves underneath some cover, and make him think he's won the fight. Ah, clever. Then after some more fighting in a ridiculously floaty racing segment, we then stow away on some sort of spacecraft in hopes of stopping the mills from doing... Uh, some something? It, it never straight up says what they want to do, just it's assumed something evil. We get to do some brief space atmosphere battles, a bit of platforming, and then out of the blue you wander into a big room and General Corrosive is just there like, Oh, hello, do come in! Without a single bloody warning either. Honestly, check out this footage. Then in this bit you need to look for four chips hidden in the boxes littering the ground floor to control him to press a massive self-destruct button because... Video game MacGuffin. Upon doing this, Glitch crashes onto Iron Star and Scathed, and then we face off against General Corrosive again. However, this time he's obviously taken some damage from the fall, and you can basically just shoot him with rockets. Well, that was a lot easier. Why is it that so many good games like this just seem to bite the dust for no apparent reason? I mean, they push the envelope and they make a lot of cool ideas and they're fun games, and even at the time, like here we've got an official Xbox Magazine Elite ranking on the front. So people obviously enjoyed it, but somehow it just failed somehow. I guess maybe people didn't pick up enough copies or the studio that were as responsible, it looks like Sierra was the publisher, didn't really like how many units were being sold, it baffles the mind. And I mean, there's so many weapons, so many interesting varied bits, like the turret sections, the stealth sections, the Simon Says bit, and I have no idea, but 
All I can say is that you guys should pick this game up if you get the chance. You can get it on Steam as far as I'm aware, or you can even pick up an old copy like me for about 10 quid. But it's just really sad, I mean, what am I going to do next time? I mean, there's got to be a game I can do next Gauntlet that maybe wasn't relegated to the shadows of other games, actually was successful and people will adore that I've never played before. I just got an idea. <laughs> yeah. You'll do. Hey guys, thanks very much for watching this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. This one for some reason also took me a while to create over the last couple of weeks, but I really enjoyed it. And I think of all the ones I've played so far, you guys should really try it out because it's awesome. But if you want to see something else that I've done recently, I mean, I'll put one here that is the Pokemon video I did of the Grizzly Gems, which is similar to the Gauntlets in that it's a game I love from my childhood rather than a game I've never played before. And for good measure here, we'll put the last Gauntlet just in case you want to see the one I did before this one, which I think was also a pretty good episode. As always, if you want to share this or subscribe or like, whatever, do what you want. I'm not going to force you and I'm not going to try and manipulate you but if you liked it you know it helps I mean the channel is going from strength to strength these days it's not necessarily in the same league as other ones but it's getting there but either way thanks so much for watching here are some bloopers and I will see you guys in the next episode see you later I'm going to harvest your bone marrow <laughs> I'm gonna get that upgrade for my M16 <laughs> oh Christ that hurts ow oh mm. uh. You're mad!